Hello viewers, welcome back to my channel. In this session, I shall continue with the process scheduling algorithms. So, the next in the list is round robin scheduling. Before I start the session, I request my viewers to like, share and subscribe to my channel. So, before I start with the numerical here, let me explain you the logic for this round robin algorithm. The criteria is a different criteria here. Previously, you have seen the criteria as the arrival time and next in the next algorithm SRTN, you have seen the criteria as the burst time. Here, the criteria is time quantum. Time quantum is the number of units assigned by the system to a process to get scheduled. So, here the logic is what let all the processes get scheduled for equal amount of time after they arrive. Look here, after they arrive into the ready queue, let them get scheduled for equal amount of time. That equal, whatever is the time assigned in for that particular situation is called as the time quantum. Suppose in the numerical, if it is mentioned time quantum is equal to 2 units, then you have to schedule a process only for 2 units, preempt, schedule the next process if it has arrived, only for 2 units, schedule the next process, preempt. So, this way you have to carry out this particular algorithm. If the burst time of a process is lesser than time quantum, then it will complete its job in one go. Suppose, sir, if I have to tell you in simpler words, let us take the burst time of a process as 6 units. Then if the time quantum given is 2 units, then the process will complete, will be scheduled only for 2 units and its remaining is how much? 4 units is still pending. So, when its turn come again, it will try to get scheduled for the next 2 units. Then once again what will happen now the remaining units are kept track and when it turn comes again for the third time it will complete its job. So if the time quantum unit is given as two units it is completing at in three stages its task. Suppose if the time quantum given in the problem is three units then three and three it will complete its job in two stages only. So depending on the time quantum you have to schedule that process for that much time only. If the time quantum value is, uh, if the burst time value is lesser than the time quantum, then there is no problem, it will get scheduled and it will complete its job in the first stage itself. So, here let us see the numerical now. Given are the values. So, what is that you will be doing? Always start a numerical, yes, solving the completion time using the running queue. See, whatever I was explaining you earlier about the Gantt chart is nothing but it is the running queue that you are showing here in order to fill the values for the completion time. But for round robin, since slightly it is like wherever this preemptive type of scheduling comes, better to maintain one more queue so that you can keep track of all the processes pending burst time. What you can do is you just, I will start maintaining another queue here and this queue is called as the ready queue. So, let me maintain ready queue also for this round robin. Earlier it was only what? The running queue. Now, remember you have to arrive correctly the values for the completion time. If these values go wrong, the subsequent values that is turnaround time, waiting time and response time may go wrong, then you will lose marks. Though you have put the same effort in carrying out the complete numerical at the end, if the values are not correct, then you are going to lose the marks. So, better what you have to do is maintain the ready queue so that you will fill correctly the values for the completion time. Let us start the arrival time 0, fine. Process P1 has arrived, schedule the process P1. See for this numerical already, uh, yeah, I have to give you this one complete information. They have given in the numerical, the question is consider four processes, P1, P2, P3, P4 with the time quantum given value is how much? 2 units. Look here, it is mentioned in the problem. Time quantum is 2 units and you are asked to find out turnaround time, average turnaround time, average waiting time or average or they may ask you just find turnaround time, waiting time and response time for each of the processes. Anyway, these things are not difficult. You can find out the average also very easily. So, what we have to do is, once this kind of question is asked, G1 will be arrival time and burst time. Start like this. Then P1, you have to schedule it only for 2 units. Burst time is 5, but you will schedule it only for 2 units. The reason is what? The reason given is, the reason is the time quantum value given is only 2 units. So, the pending burst time is 3. So, in the ready queue, first P1 was there. So, I will start like this also. In P, uh, For the ready queue, what no? P1 was there. Okay. That P1 only I have picked from the ready queue. I have scheduled it only for 2 units. Now, at time 2, I will check are there any processes that has arrived in the ready queue. Look here. 
at time 2 at time 1 also there is one process arrived at time 2 also another p2 and p3 have arrived so i'll put them in the ready queue p2 and p3 have arrived at this point what you have to do is remember that p1 has not completed its task it is still having three units of time pending so p1 turn will come again so here you have to be a bit careful when will you write the pending process the pending process will be written first check at the value here if the value here is 2 okay whatever definitely it will be 2 only because time quantum at time 2 which are the by time 2 which are the processes that have arrived in this case you can see p2 and p3 has arrived p2 and p3 has arrived by time 2 so those two processes immediately you put in the ready queue and then you don't forget to put this p1 also because p1 has still not completed its job now you pick the processes from the ready queue and put it in the running queue p2 you take so i'll put like this since i have picked already p2 p2 also i'll just schedule it only for two units p2 has got how much four so i'll schedule it only for two units still it's two units now here don't put p2 immediately at time four you check are there any processes that have arrived in the ready queue yes at time four p4 has come in the ready queue. so p4 you put in the ready queue then you have to also put the pending process which was p2 is still incomplete so you put there in the ready queue so that you will not forget that you have to schedule that process also again so that way only this ready queue will help you then p3 you take next from the ready queue once if you start placing these processes properly it is easy for you to pick and put in the running queue p3 you will start p3 uh, how much is the burst time zero it will end at zero fine so after this at time 6 no need to check because the maximum value here is 4 we have checked here p3 uh, a burst time was 6 yeah p3 burst time was 2 it got executed for 2 units of time it has completed its job also no need to worry in future for p3 okay so p3 is over next in the ready queue is p1 put here p1 p1 remaining time is how much 2 okay you uh, remaining time is 3 you will schedule it for 2 unit uh, you will schedule it for 2 units and the pending time will be 1 so p1 will get so p1 has not completed now and you don't have to check once again whether are there any processes just see if p1 has not completed then you have to remember to put in the ready queue that p1 will come again so i'll place p1 in the ready queue so this one whichever i had written here 6 to 8 this i have completed next i will take p4 from the ready queue okay p4 is here p4 has got only one unit of burst time so it will become zero you have taken p4 it will end its job at nine next is p2 p2 has got how many only remaining units is two it will become zero so 11 then p1 is remaining here p1 has got only one unit of time pending so you will write p1 and it will end its job at 12. so what is that you have done from the ready queue previous step you have put, picked the p2 9 to 11 after that you have picked p1 from 11 to 12. so this way for you the ready queue will help you in placing correctly the processes in the running queue also and also to keep track of the pending burst time so this process is the way in which you are scheduling we call it as round robin the processes come first see once again they may get the time p1 p1 is appearing here p1 is appearing here in the ready queue in a ra round robin fashion it works so once you are done with this your maximum job is over now because if these values are correct you can fill very easily the completion time p1 has completed at what time 12 p2 has completed at 11 p3 p3 has completed at 6 p4 has completed at 9 okay and the other things hope you people know every time i am doing this again because let me repeat also turnaround time is always equal to what completion time minus of arrival time now what is completion how much is completion time 12 minus 0 12 11 minus 1 10 6 minus 2 4 9 minus 4 5 waiting time is how much waiting time is always turnaround time minus of burst time so where is waiting uh, turnaround time is here burst time is here the first value i'm telling burst time waiting time turnaround time is 12 12 minus 5 7 10 minus 4 6 4 minus 2 2 5 minus 1 4 okay and uh, this one response time cpu 
for the first time when uh, the process got the CPU minus of its arrival time. Okay. For the first time when process P1 got hold of CPU, it is 0. Arrival time is 0. So, 0 minus 0 response time is 0. P2 got hold of CPU for the first time at 2. P2 arrived at 1. 2 minus 1. Okay. P3, 4. 4 minus 2. Then P4 here. P4 at 8. Arrival time is 4. 8 minus 4. 4. Okay. Find out the total time. 22 plus 4, 26. 26 plus 5, 31. Every, uh, sorry, total waiting time 13 plus 2, 15 plus 4, 90. Total response time is 4 plus 6 plus 1, 7. So, this way you can find out the total turnaround time, total waiting time, total response time. If they have asked you to find out the average, just divide. 31 divided by how many? Total number of processes. 31 by 4, 19 by 4, 7 by 4 will give you the average values for all these things. So, this is how you have to carry out the round robin shed. But look here for this particular algorithm one thing did you notice uh, contact switching how many times it has occurred like how many times we are doing the preemption once again we are assigning the CPU to another process like this how many times you are carrying out contact switching has happened here from P1 to P2 there is for the first time contact switching here 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, Six times in this particular example, the contact switching has happened. So, more number of times the contact switching happens, more is the overhead. This is one of the observation for the round robin scheduling algorithm. See, if we try to give a lesser value of time quantum, very frequently the contact switching happens. In this algorithm, what we have noticed, one observation if you see, if the time quantum value is less, okay, then more number of times the contact switching is happening. More number of times the contact switching happens, then the overhead is more, the efficiency of the system is poor. If you try to increase the con time quantum value, then what will happen is the response time becomes poorer. So, you have to come out with what a reasonable value criteria is time quantum and the mode of operation is preemption. Always try to maintain a ready queue also to arrive at correct values of the completion time of all the processes. Hope this session is useful to you all. Thank you. Bye-bye. Take care.